Now moving on to understand the Western Ghats and the Eastern Ghats which are located at the edges of the Deccan Plateau which are running parallelly to the Western Coast and the Eastern Coast respectively. Here in the Western Ghats and in the Eastern Ghats I made a clear division between both of them and at the same time you can easily write the divisions. But before moving on to the Western Ghats and the Eastern Ghats let me tell you that here the Deccan Plateau consists of largely the black soil as we already discussed that it's a table land it is formed because of the volcanic erupted activity which happened and most of the Deccan Plateau is made up of the igneous and the metamorphic rocks which were being eroding continuously as a heavy erodation happened this has been got eroded heavily so the result of this got transformed into the black soil as a larger part of the Deccan Plateau region. Now let us discuss about the Western Ghats. The Western Ghats run parallel to the Western coast and they are continuous. At very few places we have the small gaps those are known as Ghats. These are only three passes or gaps that is Thal Ghat, Bhor Ghat and Pal Ghat. These three are the main important passes which we have in the Western Ghats while the average height of the Western Ghats is 900 to 1600 meters and here in the Western Ghats we experience the orographic rainfall. As we all know that in the orographic rainfall this side we have the Arabian Sea which is on the western side of the Western Ghats. So the moisture or the water vapor which moves towards the Western Ghats will automatically move up to pass away and which results in the cooling of the water vapor into water. So we have the leeward side and the onward side happening here in the Western Ghats. That's how the Western Ghats receives the orographic rainfall. So Western Ghats is a continuous running parallelly at the Western coast of India and the average elevation of the hills or the location of the land is here 900 to 1600 meters. So it is a bit elevated when compared to the Eastern Ghats. That is the reason why in the Eastern Ghats all the rivers in the peninsular plateau flow towards the Eastern side because the Western side is already little bit elevated which makes the rivers to flow towards the Eastern side which are little bit slightly tilted. And then we have here orographic rainfall occurring and moving on to understand the Eastern Ghats. The Eastern Ghats extend from Mahin, Mahanandi Valley to Nilagiri Hills. So from Mahanandi Valley to the Nilagiris we find a wide stretch on along the Eastern Coast. But these are not continuous like the Western Ghats. They are discontinuous and they are very irregular. They are not continuous and regular like the Western Ghats. So they are completely irregular and their average height is 600 meters to 900 meters. Here in the Eastern Ghats and in the Western Ghats we have certain peaks which are very high when compared to the other places or of their average heights. That is the Anaimudi is the highest peak with 2695 meters while the next is Dodabetta and Mahindragiri hills comes at the third place and famous hill stations in the peninsular plateau are Uti and Kodaikanal. So this is about the Western Ghats as well as the Eastern Ghats. So most of the Deccan plateau is a trap which has been created with the volcanic eruption activity and we find hugely getting eroded over the times and it has been completely filled with the black soil. And here almost all the rocks are igneous or the metamorphic rocks. That's how we have for the Western and the Eastern Ghats. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.